Hello, welcome to a Vox Commando video. Today I'll be talking about the Nest thermostat and Nest Protect. And we don't have a plugin for these things, but using the existing commands, we are actually able to do pretty much anything that you would want to do with the Nest, except maybe for having real time events. So I will start off by showing you how to set it up, which is pretty straightforward. We've put together a collection of commands that we will post on the forum and we'll have a link in the description of the video. Uh, first thing you should probably do is log into your Nest account and set up your devices. I'm using virtual devices, uh, which is a great thing that Nest has provided us with and has allowed us to create these commands because we don't own the Nest hardware. And in order for our command collection to work, there are a couple of things that you should do. First off, uh, although you don't have to use Celsius, our commands are based on Celsius. So uh, you should know that you're, if you're not going to use Celsius on your nest, then you'll have to edit the commands accordingly. The other thing is that our commands use uh, names so that you can control the various devices and it's important that you give a name to your devices. So I have here in the, the virtual thermostat for the master bedroom, I've named sleepy zone. And when I want to control that, I'll be using the word sleepy zone, but this other one doesn't have a name. So I'm going to go in and give it a name. So I believe that's under where for some reason, label, and I'll call it the pit because it's downstairs and I'm amusing. So now when we look at our house, we'll see that they both have names. And for the protect, I've also set up already names for all of these devices. Uh, it, with the developer tools, I've set them to have some various states. These aren't real. You don't have to worry. My house isn't really on fire. I guess the next step is going to be to import the commands. So I have them stored right now in uh, my export folder, but you'll have them wherever you downloaded them to. Go into edit your command tree. And I just have a, an empty tree here for this demonstration. And drag them in there. Now there's basically two steps uh, to, to get everything set up in the first place, and it's to run these two commands. It's pretty easy to do, but it is, it's important that you do things in the correct order. So the first thing that you, that you should do is create the nest folder, which is where we'll be storing our payload XMLs and some other information. If you look here now at my Vox Commando folder, I do not have a nest folder yet, but by running this, command number one. It's now created this nest folder and it's placed one payload XML file in it, but there will be more files added later when we scrape data from the nest API. So the next step is going to be to authorize, but you can't just run this command. You need to do two things and the order is important here. First, you need to edit your credentials. So we've put in a sample username and password, but obviously you'll need to put in your actual username and password. So now we have edited this command, but we don't want to run it yet. The reason is that we trigger events in this command and until we save and close our tree, those events won't really do anything. So. We've edited this command and what I'm going to do is save and close. I will do the next step using a voice command and start testing right away. Show help. These are all of the voice commands for this configuration. So I'll just pull this over here where we can see it. So we haven't actually authorized or scraped any information yet, but I have this basic command here, which this was the second command that we needed to execute. So I'll do that now. And we'll see the nest folder get populated with information when we do that. 
log in to Nest. And if I just take a quick look here, you'll see, for example, in my thermo list XML that we've got the two thermostats with their IDs. You don't need to do anything with these files. It's all handled automatically. I just wanted to show you the steps that are taking place. So now if I say show help again, we'll have uh, proper help, including our new devices with their, with their friendly names. Show help. These are all of the voice commands for this configuration. Get current temperature of the sleepy zone. Sleepy zone shows a current temperature of 14.5 degrees. Now it's important to note that this is the actual temperature, not the temperature that it's set to. So if I open up the sleepy zone, you'll see here, this is showing the actual temperature that we've got. So we can change the mode of this device. It's currently set to cool to 12 degrees. Show status of sleepy zone. So here you can see all sorts of information, including the current temperature and the uh, away mode, etc. The target temperature. I will change the mode. Okay. Set sleepy zone to heat and cool. Setting sleepy zone to heat and cool mode. Set maximum temperature of sleepy zone to 26 degrees. Setting sleepy zones high to 26 degrees. Set minimum temperature of sleepy zone to 14 degrees. Setting sleepy zones low to 14 degrees. Obviously you can do the same things with the other thermostat by using its name. So this one's set to heat mode. I'll just change the temperature. Set the pit to 18 degrees. Setting the pit to 18 degrees. Set the pit to 22 degrees. Setting the pit to 22 degrees. And another handy command that you might want to use is to set the house mode. You could use a voice command, but you could also use other, if you have, uh, if you're using some other home automation or sensors or whatever, you could use an event to trigger this command when you arrive home or when you leave home. Set house to away mode. Setting house to away mode. Set house to home mode. Setting house to home mode. Another command that we have here is to check the battery health of your protect thermostats. This command may need a little bit of adjustment, um, but uh, for the most part, we have had success using it. So I'll just test this out. Check protect battery health. So that seems to work. Uh, one thing that you could do if you want to uh, experiment with that command is to have it only look for batteries that aren't fully charged and give you a warning and maybe even put that on some kind of a timer. Although I imagine Nest has already got uh, some tools there to alert you to that type of problem. So I think that pretty much covers everything. I'd just like to point out two things. First of all, this is a command that a user could, with some experience and some effort, could create for themselves. We've done it for you, but um, similar types of APIs, if they have a RESTful API, you can create these commands yourself. However, because the Nest uh, required some pretty complicated HTTP GET actions, we have improved our scrape command. So we have added uh, scrape.get action, which allows you to enter a lot more parameters such as the, uh, such as headers. Well, I'll go show you quickly because I can't remember what they're all called. So we have, uh, I guess under update nest data, we're probably using scrape.get. These are variables that are populated when we authorize that give us the correct URLs. But we have, for example, the content type that you can enter and the user agent and um, username and password are optional parameters, but they're actually included in the headers for the nest. Different APIs will use different things. So if we look at the parameter helper, this gives us maybe an easier way to look at this action. So with scrape, 
the regular scrape command, I, I believe we used to just have URL, maybe we had a uh, username and password. Now we have all of these extra things. And you can add as many headers as you want, actually, just by adding more parameters here. It'll let you enter as many as you want. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the forum. And uh, I guess I should also point out that this new action is included in Vox Commando version 2.1.3.6 or later. So these nest commands will not work with previous versions.